Hello everyone, I am Dr. Prakasha, Associate Professor at School of Education, Christ University, Bangalore. Hi, I am Ms. Supriya Narayan Rao, pursuing my Bachelor's in Education at School of Education, Christ University. I am a teacher educator involved in preparing physical science teachers. We are here to introduce you about Chandrayaan 3. August 23rd, 2023, the historic day and an exciting milestone for lunar scientists around the globe. India's Chandrayaan-3 lander touched down 600 kilometers from the south pole of the moon. We have heard a lot about Chandrayaan in the news and read articles in the newspapers and somewhat have a fair idea about the mission on the moon. But what exactly is Chandrayaan? Do we know? Chandrayaan-3 is the third lunar exploration mission after Chandrayaan-1 and Chandrayaan-2 developed by the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, to demonstrate its end-to-end -end capability in safe landing and rowing on the lunar surface. Let us understand the basics about Chandrayaan. Why is it called Chandrayaan-3? When was the mission to the moon first launched? Chandrayaan-3 is the third Indian mission to the moon. Chandrayaan-1 was launched by ISRO in October 2008 and it continued operation until August 2009. Chandrayaan-1 is best known for finding evidence of water, ice on the moon. This mission included just the orbiter and the impactor. The main objective of the first mission was to design, develop, launch and orbit a spacecraft around the moon using an Indian-made vehicle. This was done to expand the scientific knowledge of the moon upgrade India's technological capability in space and prepare a 3D atlas of the near side and the far side of the moon while conducting chemical and mineralogical mapping of the entire lunar surface. That's good to learn. What about Chandrayaan-2 then? Chandrayaan-2 was launched by ISRO on 22nd July 2019 from Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sriharikota. This had a lunar orbiter, including the famous Vikram lander and the Pragyan rover, all of which were developed in India. The main objective was to map and study the variations in lunar surface composition, as well as determine the characteristics of topsoil composition on the lunar surface. On September 6, 2019, though Chandrayaan-2 released the Vikram lander, the mission office officials lost contact as it was just 2.1 kilometers above the surface. Although the lander was lost, the orbiter continued to work well. It carried eight different instruments and continued to send back high-definition imagery of the lunar surface. So that was Chandrayaan-2. But what is special about Chandrayaan-3 then? And what are the differences between the three launches? Chandrayaan-3 consists of the lander module, the propulsion module, and a rover. These are used for developing and demonstrating new technologies for interplanetary missions. The lander and the rover have scientific payloads, which means they are designed to carry out experiments on the lunar surface to increase our understanding of the universe. The mission objectives of Chandrayaan-3 are one, to demonstrate safe and soft landing on the lunar surface. Two, to demonstrate the rover roving on the moon. And three, to conduct inside scientific experiments. How does Chandrayaan-3 work? What are the different parts of Chandrayaan-3? Science on the Chandrayaan-3 mission is split between the lander, the rover, and the propulsion module payload. The propulsion module is a box-like structure with one large sonar panel mounted on one side and a large cylinder on top that acts as a mounting structure for the lander. The propulsion module is more than 2.2 tons of mass. The function of this propulsion module is to carry the launch module from the launch vehicle injection till final lunar 100 km circular polar orbit 
and separate the launch module from the propulsion module. The lander is generally box shaped with four landing legs and four landing thrusters. The rover is a rectangular chassis on a six wheel rocker bogey, wheel drive assembly. The rover sends its communications to Earth through the lander. The rover has APXX, which is Alpha Particle X-ray Spectrometer, to look for elements in the lunar soil and rocks. It also has LIBS, which is Laser Induced Breakdown Spectroscope, to examine the chemical and elemental composition of the lunar surface. What is the procedure that Chandrayaan-3 is launched into space? To understand how any rocket is launched into space, let's look at a simulation provided by Curious Minds Initiative by the Ministry of Education in New Zealand. We could adjust the mass, thrust, thrust time, drag and mass change to understand what are the ideal parameters for any rocket launch. You could try this too. Now that we have learnt about what is Chandrayaan-3, let us understand why does India need Chandrayaan mission and why is Chandrayaan-3 important for us? In just under 14 Earth days, the data from Chandrayaan-3's rover named Pragyan, meaning wisdom, showed that lunar soil contained expected elements such as iron, titanium, aluminium and calcium. It also showed an unexpected surprise, which was sulphur. Sulphur mainly comes from volcanic activity and Chandrayaan-3's measurement of sulphur is the first to occur on the moon. This helps us understand the geology of the whole moon. Why should we learn that? If moon should be used as a space travel hub or a base camp from where many more scientific explorations need to occur, what Chandrayaan-3 has now accomplished is the first step. Many agencies around the world have already planned long-term space explorations for which this might be an important milestone. In June 2023, shortly before the scheduled Chandrayaan-3 launch, India also signed on to the NASA-led Artemis Accords, aiming for peaceful human and robotic exploration of the moon. While the immediate benefits show human spaceflight, according to the White House, the data from Chandrayaan-3 may be useful for future Artemis human landings too. What else can we conclude with the findings about sulphur? This also helps us in understanding the atmospheric sulphur formation around the Earth, which could explain earlier meteorite activity which struck the surface and vaporized on impact, which also helps us determine the history of our moon, thereby our Earth. Sulphur-based concrete has several benefits than the concrete used in building materials on Earth. It doesn't require water and mixing, and it also hardens very easily, which would save a lot of water during building constructions. Which other mission have gone to the moon apart from Chandrayaan? While seven missions are currently operating on or around the moon, the lunar South Pole region hasn't been studied from the surface before. So Pragnan's new measurements will help scientists understand questions about how the moon formed or evolved. What is the economic impact of Chandrayaan-3 to India and what are the cost versus benefits of this mission? The success of Chandrayaan-3 could contribute significantly to India's space economy, projected to be worth 13 billion US dollars by 2025. This helps in employment generation, encourage private investments, and foster the growth of the country's space tech ecosystem. The space industry demands a highly skilled workforce in science, engineering, and various technical disciplines. The Chandrayaan missions have already demonstrated their potential to create high-tech jobs. From research scientists to engineers to technicians and administrative staff, the space sector's growth 
can offer a diverse range of employment opportunities. This development is particularly crucial in India where the need for skilled labor and the potential for job creation have gained prominence, especially in the post-pandemic era. As demonstrated by China and Russia's collaboration on the moon base and the International Lunar Research Station, participation in such initiatives could provide India with unique opportunities for collaboration, resource utilization and cutting-edge research. India's alignment with the Artemis Accords also showcases its commitment to international cooperation in space exploration. What is the physics behind working and how can I understand it in simple terms? We still do not see a lot of articles and details about the actual construction of Chandrayaan-3 in public domain. But those that of Chandrayaan-1 and 2 are easily available. Why do you think this happens? This is basically to address geopolitical issues and protect the sanctity of the mission as it is still in progress. However, we do know the basic structure of Chandrayaan-3. Chandrayaan-3, India's lunar mission, employs remote sensing techniques to study the moon. The spacecraft is equipped with instruments that capture light, radiation or other signals reflected or emitted by the moon's surface. These instruments gather data about the moon's composition the topography and other features. For example, the lander's APXX and LIBS are remote sensing instruments that analyze the elements present in the moon's soil and rocks without actually touching it. Chandrayaan-3 communicates with scientists on the Earth using a two-way communication system. The spacecraft is equipped with transmitters and receivers that send and receive signals in the form of radio waves. These signals travel at the speed of light and can cover vast distances. Here is how the communication system works. The lander and the rover collect data from their instruments as they explore the moon surface. This data is transmitted as radio waves which travels through space and are archived and are received by large antennas on Earth. The scientists on Earth analyze that data and send commands to the spacecraft using the same communication system. The spacecraft's receivers pick up the commands, decode them and carry out the requested actions. For example, scientists might instruct the rover to move to a particular location. Where are all the parts of the Chandrayaan-3 manufactured? UR Rao Satellite Center, URSC Bengaluru, is the leading center for building satellites and developing associated satellite technologies. The Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, BSSC, also pursues active research and development in the field of aeronautics, avionics, materials, mechanisms, vehicle integration, chemicals, propulsion, space ordnance, structures, space physics, and systems reliability. There are various other tests and checks that happen in different centers of ISRO as well. ISRO mentions that the rover payloads have a laser-induced breakdown spectroscope and alpha particle X-ray spectrometer. Why are these used? These are used in qualitative and quantitative elemental analysis and to derive chemical composition and infer mineralogical composition to further our understanding of the lunar surface. To determine the elemental composition, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, potassium, calcium, titanium, iron, of lunar soil and rocks all around the lunar landing site. Why is the propulsion module payload used? Spectropolarimetry of habitable planet Earth shape enables future discoveries of small planets in reflected light. 
This would allow us to probe into a variety of exoplanets which would qualify for the presence of new life. What are the four parts of lander payloads? Laser Retroreflector Array, LRA, which is a passive experiment to understand the dynamics of the moon system. Instrument for Lunar Seismic Activity, ILSA, measures the seismic activity around the landing site and delineating the structure of the lunar crust and mantle. Chandra Surface Thermophysical Experiment, CHASTE, carries out measurements of thermal properties of the lunar surface near the polar region. Radio anatomy of moon-bound hypersensitive ionosphere and atmosphere, RAMBHA, measures the near-surface plasma density consisting of both ions and electrons and its, and its changes with time. What has been done by Chandrayaan-3 so far? The six-wheeled solar-powered Pragyan rover spotted sulphur in the lunar soil for the first time, which reveals volcanic activity on the moon, which could help space travelers build infrastructure on the moon. The Vikram lander made history when it used a thermometer-like probe to measure the temperature of the moon's soil. The first such insight measurement ever taken, scientists have said. Where did all the testing of the Chandrayaan-3 happen before it was launched? For Chandrayaan-3, the integrated hot test with propulsion sensors, navigation, guidance and control, and flight software was conducted at SDSC SHAR Sriharikota. National Remote Sensing Center, NRSC Hyderabad, supporting the ground testing of onboard sensors with references and aerial imaging. The Indian Air Force provided helicopter for the integrated sensors and navigation testing called Integrated Cold Test at Chitradurga. What is the current status of the Chandrayaan 3 mission? By the end of one day on the moon, about a month to us on Earth, the machine had 220 pounds, 100 kilograms of fuel left after its primary operations till now. As per 4th December 2023 update by ISRO, Chandrayaan-3 has successfully accomplished its work and will be brought back to Earth soon. Hope this video has given basic understanding what is Chandrayaan and why it is important for us. Thank you.